the last few videos have gone over details on compiler based techniques for high ILP and what we've done is we've tried to schedule instructions to try and maximize performance. Now in this next set of three videos I'm going to talk about the problems that are introduced by branches because every time you have a branch and you try to move an instruction before or after the branch there are potential complexities. Okay, So I'm going to discuss uh, these problems and how we can overcome those problems. First up, I'll discuss a concept called predication. Okay, so this is this is most applicable to uh, deep pipelines, where every control hazard or every every time you go along the wrong path, you are penalized by more than a handful of cycles. Okay, and what predication does is it converts those control hazards into data hazards, which also cost a few cycles, but hopefully that cost is less than the penalty of going along the wrong path. Okay, so this is best explained with, with an example. So here's my code. It is an if then else statement, and you only have you know one instruction in the then part and two instruction in the uh, two instructions in the else part. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm converting this code into the sequential sequence of instructions. Okay, you know, if you assume that this branch is not strongly biased, that it goes you know fifty percent along the then part and, and fifty percent of the time along the else part, then you know every other time you're going to pay um, pay a fairly steep price which is you know at least a handful of cycles so instead what I'm doing is I'm choosing to execute both the then part and the else part right so this new code doesn't even have a branch it executes the then part and then it goes ahead and executes the else part and what I've done is I've added this this clause over here which says that you know go ahead and do r2 plus r4 but before you write the, the result into r2 check the value of r7 only if R7 is non-zero should you perform the write, otherwise just throw this result away. And same thing over here, right? I mean, note that you go along the else part only if R1 is non-zero. Okay, so you go ahead and do this, these computations, but before you do the write into R6 and R4, check the value of R1. Only if R1 is non-zero do you go ahead and make the result permanent in R6 and R4, else you just throw the result away. Okay, so this is what what you're doing. You're not doing, and you're not you're not changing your program counter and your path based on the value of R1. You're executing both sides of the branch, and then the result is made permanent depending on the value of that condition, right? So the else part is based on the condition of R1, and the then part is based on R7, which is set to be the opposite of R1. So before you get into this code, you have to set R7 to be the opposite of R1. Okay, so this is what predication does. It it converts control dependencies into data dependencies, right? Now uh, this entire instruction execution is based on the availability of R2, R4 and R7. So you just have to make sure that your data dependencies are being being respected and being resolved and then you can go ahead and perform this instruction. Okay, there's one other issue with data dependencies. You will see that the else part you know, needs the value of R2 and the then part is writing something into R2. Okay, so if I just wrote out the same sequence of instructions, the else part would receive the value from the then part, which is of course you know not what the programmer intended. Okay, so I, before I get into this code again, I have to make a copy of R2 into R8, and the else part receives its value from R8. Okay, so the compiler has to also make sure that these dependencies, um, or you know that artificial dependencies are not being introduced. So predication requires uh, a new set of instructions and these instructions have an additional operand right it's the it's, it's that conditional um, result or it's the predicate register so here's an example instruction this is a load word conditional so a load normally will read from an address and put it into a register r1 in addition I have this register r3 and so the result gets put into r1 depending on whether r3 is non-zero or not okay so the main impact of having predication is that uh, each instruction now has this additional register. Okay, so there's one more input operand, which means you know more register file ports, more bypassing logic, and so on. So that's one major complication. The second major complication is that you're introducing additional data dependencies, and so this increases the chances of stalls because of data hazards. Right. So if you go back to this example over here, you need the result R4. Okay, and likewise over here you need the result of R4 before that instruction can proceed. And if R4 is not available, that third instruction is going to stall 
and everybody behind it is also going to stall right whereas alternatively with with this piece of code if you had chosen to go along the else part you would really not be stuck waiting for r4 okay so there are more data dependencies which could increase your raw hazards and as i said the main goal over here is to try and eliminate uh, the the stall cycles because of control hazards right so in a deep pipeline where uh, the price of going along the wrong way is pretty steep oh, in those cases predication ends up being the most useful okay so in the next video I'll discuss support for speculation that is what happens when I move instructions before a branch